Welcome everyone, and you probably know that I and Ronnie Wong wrote a book on Packet Tracer for CCNA studies, and we have chapter review labs in that textbook, and this is a video answer key for those chapter review labs. Let's jump right in. We have chapter five to tackle, and this chapter is going to really be testing us on our interfaces, and this includes serial interfaces. So let me zoom in so I can see my devices here, and we have R1, R2, and Switch1 in this scenario, and I think I'll go ahead and get started right on R1. Why not just do the configurations in the order listed here? I think that'll be just fine. So I'm gonna go in to the R1 device, and I'm gonna use configure terminal to get into global configuration mode. And I am going to give this device its host name of R1. And then I'm going to move to the interface serial 010. Always be sure in your exam environment that you are getting those interface references perfect. You need to be on the right interface at all times. We'll go ahead and use the IP address command to give the IP address. Once again, be sure to check for typos here. And notice we have a 24-bit mask that is in use. The encapsulation we're going to set to point-to-point -point protocol, and we need to no-shut this interface per the instructions. Now, notice we are going to be in, if I do a show IP interface brief, we are going to be in an up down state, I believe, and that's to be expected here. Yeah, notice serial one slash zero, a uh, zero slash one slash zero is actually in a down down state. Down down dooby dooby down down down. All right, I'll stop singing uh, 1960s doo wop and get back to the point here, and that is that this is expected, of course, because we've just configured one side of this interface, and we know there's going to be configuration that needs to be done on the other side. So that's fine. Uh, we can't forget, though, on this same router, we have another interface that we need to configure. That is gig 0 slash 0 slash 0. So I'm going to get in there and assign the IP address of 192.168.11. We are using a 24-bit mask. That looks great. And duplex is going to be set to the auto mode. Okay. And the uh, interface state should be enabled. So I am going to do a no shut on this interface. And sure enough, on this Ethernet interface, we are going to have an up up status because this interface is connected to a switch and the switch is able to have default configuration, which can accommodate this. So yeah, that's the configuration of the R1 device. Now, have a strategy on saving your configurations. Notice the uh, exam instructions here say, ensure all configurations are saved. That's not gonna be pointed out to you as one of your steps in an exam environment. In fact, in subsequent chapter reviews, we don't do anything like that. We don't do any reminding. So have a strategy for saving your configurations. Mine is always to save the configuration as I am moving from one device to another. So I'm leaving the R1 device, moving over to R2. I'm gonna save my configuration as I leave that device. Okay, we're gonna to go to the R2 configuration now. And here on router two, we are going to go into global configuration mode, and I'm going to give this device its host name. And then I'm gonna to move to the serial 010 interface, and I am going to give the IP address of 10.0.0.2, and I am using a 24-bit mask, and the encapsulation will be the point-to-point -point protocol, 
And you may have noticed the little clock rate or clock symbol when we were looking at our topology that is on this device. See that little clock icon? This tells us that on this side of the serial connection, we are to provide the clock rate. We are the DCE end, and the clock rate they want is 128,000. Again, be sure you're typing that correctly, and then we wanna do a no shut, and this is a big confirmation. Notice this link now transitions to an up, up state. That is terrific. And if you wanted to, notice I save my configuration because I'm about to go to another machine. But if you wanted to, you could always go back now and confirm that your serial interface on R1 has achieved an up, up status. And of course it has. All right, great. So we've got the serial link done between R1 and R2, and we're almost done with the ethernet link between R1 and switch one. That is what's left for us to do in this chapter review. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on our switch one device here, and we're gonna enter that device, and sure enough, that device needs a host name. Switch one will do per our instructions. And then we're gonna go to the fast ethernet interface and we're gonna make sure the duplex is set to auto. And then we're gonna make sure the interface is enabled with a no shut. And I do believe it was already enabled, but that's okay. I'm gonna save my configuration and boy, oh boy, that's going to be it. That is a look at the configuration of our topology inside of chapter five. I do believe in the exam environment that would be good enough for me. Notice we went and confirmed that we had all of the interfaces in their up, up status and we configured as we went carefully and precisely, and wow, I'm ready to go ahead and submit my chapter review lab for grading, and look at that, sure enough, we got everything correct in everything that was being graded for in both the uh, running configuration as well as the startup configuration, that's right. So chapter five, pretty straightforward, uh, not, hand-holding step-by-step, but notice that they pretty much gave us a list of what we needed to configure, and it was pretty darn simple to implement that. Obviously, as we go on in these chapter reviews, we're gonna see a greater level of difficulty, we're gonna see less hand-holding, and I hope you'll be joining me for those video reviews. Thanks so much for watching.